Hello, this is Tim Perfect from Two Canoes Software, and I want to show you how you can use WinClone 8 to be able to transfer um, your bootcamp partition from a earlier Mac, in this case a 2013 MacBook Pro, um, to one of the new 26, uh, 2019 16 inch MacBook Pros. Um, so this is Windows 10, it's on this, the 2013 MacBook Pro, and I want to transfer it over to the new uh, 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. And so the way we do that, um, we need a couple things to be able to do it. One, we need WinClone 8. You can download and purchase from twocanoes.com. Um, we are gonna need a, a external drive to be able to transfer the image. It's gotta have some size to it because the image in this case is about 50 or 60 gigabytes. Um, um, and uh, you might need larger, so it's nice to have a nice uh, larger external device. Once we, we save this, we can use this to transfer it over to the new machine. Um, and then also you can need at least an eight gigabyte flash drive that's gonna be formatted as extended fat to be able to uh, inject the drivers. The, the new 2019 Macs uh, have the T2 coprocessor, which means the SSD is managed by this new coprocessor and the Windows, uh, Windows 10 doesn't include drivers for that. So you need to inject the drivers. And the way that we do that is we grab the ISO from Microsoft, we create a bootable um, flash drive, and we put the Apple drivers on here, and then we just run a script from Two Canoes to inject it in. The process is pretty uh, painless uh, once you get this up and up and running, um, and before that, it's relatively easy to use uh, WinClone to be able to transfer it, and then we create this drive. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm now on the 2013 MacBook Pro, and I'm gonna create a WinClone image of the bootcamp partition that's on this machine. You can see that I have a Windows partition and it has all the regular Windows stuff in it. And if I get info on it, I can see that it has a capacity of 425 gigs and it's used 64 gigabytes. So when I restore this image, I know that it's gonna have to be at least 66 gigabytes large. I'll probably create something like 100 gig or more. So um, what I'll do is I'll open up WinClone and simply select the uh, create image from volume and then click on select volume, select the Windows volume leave the make WinPE bootable and restore uh, unchecked, and then I'll click on save image. And since I'm gonna be tra uh, transferring this, I'll uh, select my external drive and give this a name. I'll call this Windows uh, 10 uh, image. And then I'll click on save. And it'll go ahead and save that image. And then once it's completed, um, I'll go over I'll, take, I'll disconnect that drive and take it over to the, uh, the 2019 MacBook Pro. Now that the image has been created um, and it's on that external drive, I'm now on the 2019 MacBook Pro um, 16 inch and I plugged in that external drive and it has this Win 10 image on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and restore that uh, image to uh, the bootcamp partition. The first thing I need to do is actually create the bootcamp partition. So I'll open up Disk Utility, and I'll create the bootcamp partition. So I'll make sure Drive is selected, and I'll click on Partition, and it'll ask me what kind of uh, space sharing you want to do, and I want to click on Partition. And I want to create a bootcamp partition, and as I mentioned, in the first part, it has to be at least 64 gigs, and I'll make it, I don't know, 100 and, 125 gigs, 125 gigs, good. And I want it to be, uh, I'll call it Windows, and I want it to be XFAT. It'll be converted over to, um, and too fast when it's restored. The bootcamp partition has now been created. Um, so if we go look back at partitions, uh, we now have a Windows partition that is 125 gigabytes large. Um, and so we're ready to restore the WinClone image to it. Um, so I'll open up WinClone and I will restore the image. So I'll select the source, and then I will select the destination, which will be Windows for my bootcamp partition, and I'll click on Restore Image. The image has now been restored. If I boot into bootcamp uh, right now by uh, rebooting the Mac and holding down the option key, I will get the uh, inaccessible boot device because it doesn't have the Apple SSD driver. So the next thing I'll do is I'll create a bootable uh, thumb drive to be able to uh, inject that driver. Um, first thing I need to do is download two different resources. The first one is I want to download, go to the um, uh, Bootcamp Assistant, 
in the utilities folder and under the action menu I'll choose download Windows support software. And I'll go ahead and I'll save this to the desktop. Um, I've actually already downloaded it so I won't I won't spend the time to download again, but if I normally just click save, it would, it would save uh, to the desktop. Um, the next thing I need is the Microsoft, uh, uh, the, the Windows ISO for Windows 10. Uh, if you just do Windows 10 ISO, it leads us to the Microsoft site. And we'll go ahead and download it here. So I can choose just the Windows 10 edition, confirm that, and then I'll download the 64-bit version. Once it validates me, there we go. Uh, I'll do English. And then I'll choose the 64-bit uh, version. And as well, I've already downloaded uh, this here. So I already have that Windows 10 uh, ISO downloaded. So now that I have those two resources, I can uh, plug in my, I'll disconnect my external drive. plug in my USB flash drive and go into disk utility and mount it as, or as uh, formatted as XFAT. And uh, I have uh, go ahead and format that. And now I need, now I have this empty drive that is XFAT. And so what I wanna do is uh, copy the resources to it. So the first thing I'll do is on my desktop, I have that Windows uh, support software and I'll copy the bootcamp um, folder to it. There we go, it's copying. The next thing I'll do is I'll go to my download folder and I'll double click on the Windows ISO that I downloaded. Okay, and so now I'll, I'll, um, I'll copy all of those resources and I'll go into the XFAT volume and I'll paste it in. So it's gonna basically copy all those high level um, all the top level items from the ISO and put it onto this drive. So I've copied the bootcamp folder from the Windows uh, resources um, and I copied all the other items from the Microsoft ISO for Windows 10. Uh, the last thing I need to put in there is also if you download from the Two to Canoe site, there's uh, an external drive resources um, that you download as a zip and it's got three items in it, Apple drivers, auto attend, and wind clone fix. And I'll drag that over and copy that to the top level as well. So those um, are the, uh, is a folder to put some drivers we need into it, uh, a script to run, and also a configuration file. Um, so what we need to put inside this Apple drivers folder, it's empty right now, is if we go back um, to our, uh, the, uh, Windows support and we'll look in the WinPE driver, anything that starts with Apple, we will copy and put inside this Apple drivers folder. Okay, that's done. And then in the bootcamp one, there's a specific driver we need to add in. It's under Apple and it's called the Apple uh, keyboard internal USB. And that will enable the touch bar, which we need to do shift F10. So I'll put that in as well. All right, now I'll just wait until all those resources are done copying in. And then I'll review the drive and we will then reboot into it. I'll show you uh, how to run that script. Drive has now been created. Just to review what we did, if we look inside this external drive, we can see that uh, it has the Apple drivers, which is all the drivers that start with Apple, plus we added this that from the WinPE folder, plus we added in this Apple keyboard internal USB, which will give us the touch bar. Um, this boot folder and all this stuff down here was part of the Windows ISO. And then we had the bootcamp folder. The bootcamp folder is not actually used when we're injecting drivers, um, but rather it's gonna be convenient for us when we get into Windows to install the drivers, uh, the updated drivers. Um, but the important one is this Apple drivers and this auto intent.xml that will that'll load the driver. All right, so let me go ahead and reboot into reboot by holding down the option key and um, show you what it looks like to inject the drivers.
sorry this is a bit hard to see, but uh, you can see it's now booted up into Windows. Um, the keyboard works, the mouse works, and in order, I have to press uh, F10, so I'll hold the function key down. It shows all the function keys, and then I'll do F10, and it'll come up with the command prompt. you got to click on the window to bring it to the front, so then do C, colon, backslash, win clone fix. Then hit return, and it'll prompt you and say, do you want to sell the drivers? Hit return. It goes in installs the drivers. There it goes. And it's done. Uh, and then I hit return to continue. And then it reboots. And I'll, unpl I'll hold the option key down. I'll unplug the thumb drive. Okay, now I'll choose the Windows volume. It'll start to boot up. And that's actually a really good sign because it's checking the device drivers and now it's completed. And we didn't have the inaccessible boot device. So now we successfully restored the, uh, injected the drivers and restored WinClone or the WinClone image of the bootcamp partition. Now that we've got the drivers injected, I've removed the, the USB uh, the flash drive, um, rebooted into Windows. It takes about two or three minutes, maybe up to five minutes to start up because it does the initial detecting of uh, the new hardware. But now I've uh, booted into Windows. You can see the, uh, the trackpad's working fine. The uh, keyboard's working fine. I even have the touch bar working because I injected those drivers. Um, I will need to log in and be able and install the remainder of the bootcamp drivers. Um, but what's nice is that we've already put those on here. So inside the bootcamp folder, you just double click on setup and proceed to uh, install the drivers, uh, the remainder of the drivers. It might come up to say repair, but you just repair it. Depending on what the state of the prior Mac was for the bootcamp drivers, it might ask you to install them or to repair the installation. So thanks very much for watching um, and uh, showing you how we can migrate this 2013 or older Mac, 9T2 Mac, to one of the, the new Macs, the 2019 uh, MacBook Pro 16-inch. Thanks very much for watching and be sure to check back for more videos.